Indie Comic Union presents Quilt. A collaboration between the comic makers of the Union, an original story set upon the dying patchwork world of The Quilt. Join us on the adventure, not just in the comic, but in the making of it, on YouTube, Instagram, and at IndieComicUnion.com. I'm Bradley Littlejohn. I make the comics Wiltworthy and Galact Opera. You can find my published works at BradleyLittlejohn.com or on Instagram at The Seahorsey. Uh, Joining me today is the author bot. Hi, I'm the author bot. I draw Chaos Engine and Nemo 3000. I draw them live on Twitch, and you can find me on Instagram at the author bot. And up next is Drew. Hi, I'm Drew F. Lee. I'm the creator of Incandescence. Uh, You can find it at incandescencecomics.com or on Instagram at incandescencecomics. Uh, Next up is uh, One and Only Comics. Hi, this is Brian from One and Only Comics. Uh, I have a bunch of comics. You sure do. Uh, you can find my work on Instagram at One and Only Comics, both underscores instead of spaces, or you can find it on my website, oneandonlycomics.com. Hey, I'm Matt. Uh, Matt draws D&D from Instagram. Happy to be here. <laughs> it's nice to have you. Uh, hi, we're uh, Kay and Kendall. Um, and we draw the comic Star Save Your Bunny, which you can find uh, on Instagram at Star Save Your Bunny. <laughs> right on. And you guys are on, on Webtoons as well, right? Uh, we are on uh, Tap Tapis. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is a long, crazy URL that we're not going to say here. <laughs> Links on the... Uh, on the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Check it out. Uh, hi, my name is Aaron Williams. Um, you may know me as the host of Comics Manifest. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at Aaron M. Will. Um, right now I have a project going on. Uh, not only am I uh, working on the second season of Comics Manifest, but I'm also doing this fanzine called Untamed. It's a fanzine for Final Fantasy XIV. So if you're interested, you can check it out on um, Twitter at ff 14 Untamezine. Hey, I'm Connor Cottontail. Uh, I check me out on Instagram. I create a comic called uh, Honey Here, A Wage Slave Hero. It's pretty great. Everyone should read it. The end. <laughs> Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, too early. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're snaking it's never on, too man. early. <laughs> <laughs> and then Robbie, I think you're up. Hi, I'm Robert Hamill. Uh, you can find me at Hamill Art on Instagram. I'm a comic artist in Macon, Georgia. I draw using both traditional mediums and digital. I draw superheroes and horror comics. Look for my original comic, Primordium, coming soon. <laughs> All right. With those adru- uh, introductions uh, uh, past us, let's move on and jump into what we're uh, trying to sort out. Today we're discussing the nuts and bolts of how we're going to make this crazy idea work, how we're going to be able to go from our script and all the mad brainstorming that started with uh, John and I and is now bounced into the Indie Comic Union where there's uh, ideas flying every day within the, uh, the Discord chats and then on the website. But we want to move that forward, uh, bringing it into our squares and into our comics which we can post on Instagram and on our website and show that process happening um, on the day-to-day on YouTube. Uh, So over on our website at the Indie Comic Union, uh, you'll find that issue one, which we've temporarily titled The God Fruit, uh, is posted up there. Uh, The members of the union are able to check this out and work from that script, and uh, viewers can come take a look at what we're working on there. As we build up uh, our pages, you'll see it gets added to the full script page. But this is the page breakdown. So the page breakdown is going to show us uh, the basic story info that's going to have to occur on that uh, page of the script um, for that issue. From there, we end up jumping. Let's make that jump onto that full page breakdown. One of the things we need to discuss today is how we're going to set up and decide who gets to uh, score a panel to work on and uh, if we have any ideas for systems to make that happen. Uh, 
you know, the, the best part of the altruist in me goes, oh, let's work out. People will just want things. They'll take things. But uh, I don't know. You guys have any contributing insight or ideas into how we can make this a little bit easier? Uh, you know, I think part of the whole thing with it is just going to be making sure that no one gets burned out. Yeah. Um, when, when you had first brought up the idea, uh, it sounded to me like you and John were going to be working on the first issue, yeah. like, like you two were going to be doing the bulk of the work. Yeah. So, I, so, you know, I already was kind of worried, okay, you two are going to get burned out. But <laughs> I, I confess I'm a little at the burned out phase. I'm ready to do just my own comic and not have to think, how do I? Yeah. And then the, the other thing here, I guess, <laughs> is just making sure that everybody, you know, gets a chance because it is kind of tough with a large group that we have uh, just to make sure that everybody uh, gets their opportunity to do what they're not only what they're comfortable with, but what they're good at. Yeah. And sometimes people are really good at things that they may not be comfortable admitting to. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. Been, thinking, I've been thinking and trying to, to tap different people and kind of go check out, say, hey, are you interested in kind of developing this element? All right, right at this point, we're kind of in this visual development stage where there's going to be a lot of meetings like tomorrow talking about how do we draw these space barbarians that are in the script or this or that. But eventually it'll be at that level of who has time to do one of the six panels that's coming out this week um, or hopefully I think weeks ahead. I think it'll be good too um, for folks who are, are busy right now in the union or that want to get involved a little later on. That there's sort of there's sort of a welcoming feeling, like they can join uh, even if they miss the first couple of weeks or something. There's still something to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's a really neat thing is, is you can just kind of jump in and out. And hopefully it's a way to encourage other people to see what we're up to and want to collaborate with us, uh, want to be a part of what we're working on, and to see that kind of um, uh, mythology. The, the, the thing that we're pushing is we, we're better together, lifting each other up, collaborating on things, working on things together. And, and John and I had hoped that bringing this into the union would be a vehicle to make more of that visible, uh, that uh, cartoons don't have to be just isolated. Uh, we can work on these things together as such. So... Um, well, I, was, I wonder if having a uh, shared Google Doc with the script uploaded might be an idea where everybody could just come in and put their names on the panels you like, and then you see immediately who's taking what panels. Oh, that's, that's really what I was going to say. That's a good idea. I'm, I'm writing that down. Google Docs would be a good one. <laughs> but most people do have access to that, too. And so are we going to focus panel by panel, or is there, like, room for maybe um, – you know, say somebody wants to do a scene or something like that, yeah, uh, just for it to be co cohesive? That's a great question. I know there are a couple points um, in the script where, where I imagined, like, the big two-page spread at the dead center of the book is when all the bruised black creatures that we still have to develop. And, Robbie, you really kicked that off with a cool visualization. Um, but uh, where all those creatures burst out of the tree line, we just see that big diversity. And I imagine that as a huge collective as a draw jam but then like you even noticed there were pages and connor mentioned it the big um ground pound page where there's kind of an yeah, bam. big splash so there are times i think where there's going to be that uh, uh that artist that wants to grab that and do this you know big splash page and, and things so hopefully and we'll get better at it at mixing it up um uh, that that will be a regular thing where there's people that just want to bring it and do this whole big spread well, or run a sequence of storytelling so I think we can be open to that. At first, I just wanted to make it bite-sized. And so that's why we kind of were trying to make it panel by panel. And people just have to do one panel in a week. It seems very low commitment. So, yeah. Because um, I, I like just reading through the Discord and everyone talking about it, there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of people are really excited to start working on this thing. Um, what I was suggesting or what I wanted to suggest is um, maybe just collecting all the names of people who want to for sure draw a panel at least yeah. for like the first couple pages. And then maybe um, you, Bradley, and a couple other um, people that are working on the scripts and like the layouts and that kind of stuff um, can work on maybe assignments to get people to uh, say, hey, uh, your assignment to finish panel three on this page, your assignment to finish panel six on this page. Because like we mentioned earlier, some people don't know really what their strengths are that maybe we can see or something. Um, could, be, could be kind of fun that way and, and make the project a little more organized perhaps. 
Yeah, that's a good thing. I, I feel like it'll be really low stress, even though it's really ambitious, once we just get some momentum and everybody can see it. Did you guys remember that X-Men Heroes for Hope comic in the 80s? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that you thing remember? was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you remember how they set it up? It had the overarching story, kind of like what we have with the yeah. issue one script here. And then they assign different, uh, like, one page or two pages to, uh, like, different teams. Right. And, and they just kind of, they were able to, like, do in, inside that overarching storyline, they did their own thing in those couple of pages. That, you know, that, that Stephen King, Bernie Wrightson bit was. Yeah. Tough. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and there was an Alan Moore piece in it. I think that's the only time um, Alan Moore ever touched the X-Men. He hasn't had a lot of Marvel exposure, so that was crazy. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, a I mean, that, that may be an idea. Yeah, I think that's great. And especially as we as we see what people's interests and commitment levels are, it will probably level out into that happening sometimes. And sometimes it's just people taking chores for the panels and that. So it sounds like we could um, do a, do a two-part process to get this going. Like Aaron said, getting a sign-up is a really smart idea, and I'll, I'll look into seeing if there's a nice, simple way to streamline that either on the website or within Discord. And then on top of that, um, recruiting and just kind of uh, running around to people and hustling them up and asking them. I think it is important to, to make people feel welcome to be a part of this and that other people are seeing their strengths. That always feels good when somebody says, man, you would nail it at doing this particular thing. I could see mm -hmm. some really interesting things happening uh, where, where people may collaborate even on their individual panels. It's like we have some folks who are super invested and interested in, in settings and, and you know, kind of like uh, setting art, background art, uh, architecture, yeah. that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And I could see someone like someone like that kind of maybe falling in with someone who is maybe more tailored to character art or, or you know, something like that. I, I think that would be yeah. kind of fun to see just like maybe two people who have very good strengths in different areas collaborating on a single panel. Oh, yeah. I'm I volunteer to give that. somebody else my backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the foreground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's cool. And I think that, um, well, how, how are you imagining um, we're able to, like, we're all going to have different cool things. And how are you imagining we're going to be able to see each other's stuff to riff off of it and kind of keep some cohesion, but also, you know, um, I, I don't think we're all just drawing our panels or, or assigning people in um, isolated, right? Uh, no, and, and actually, Matt, it's like I paid you to do a segue. Uh, we've been talking about panels. <laughs> well, let's go on and talk about draw jams. Uh, okay. <laughs> we have an actual answer for this one, whereas the other thing, John and I were clueless. We're like, I don't know, man. I don't know how to get, you know, a herd all these cat artists into this bag and get them to do panels, lock it down. This one we have an idea about because the whole idea for doing this came from those draw jam sessions that we started doing on Magma Studio. Um, and so we wanted to talk with you guys about um, what those draw jams could look like. We've had success doing stuff straight up just on Zoom because screen sharing is so uh, effective. And so John and I can both share our screens or a bunch of us can share our screens. And that is very flexible to do on Zoom because we can show off people that are working analog if they just want to set up their camera and show us what they're drawing. And at the same time, we could have a Magma Studio open as one of the screens that we're sharing and people could be drawing actually together on the same canvas or just drawing off of their own screens on their own software and sharing that. Um, and so we're hoping to schedule a time that works with everybody to have a draw jam each week when we're doing a page. And that's going to help us with those page assignments already and to get the flavor and to get it to look similar and to get it to look like a real collaboration. Uh, because just like what's happening here, we have great ideas that aggregate and make the whole thing better or twist it and make it go into a crazy new direction uh, just because we are communicating about the process and showing off what creative people do. And I, I think that's the real angle of why this is even a little bit interesting to put together for YouTube is to show that process. I know as a kid, I loved how to draw comics the Marvel way because it was the tiniest little seed of insight into how you actually made comics, but it was completely asocial 
Um, but, uh, and I love behind the scenes or making of documentaries on artistic projects. So this is our opportunity to do that for indie comics and collaboration that is really unique to what the Indie Comic Union does. So I don't know, what are you guys' opinions if I open it to the floor about the Draw Jam stuff? Is it something you have enthusiasm for? Are you interested more in working on the Zoom side of things or actually in Magma Studio? I think you're totally right about the Zoom the Zoom format, just like opening up a lot of options for people, especially like, you know, like maybe one week you might feel like doing it digitally and then the next week maybe you want to spin it and, you know, work with hand on paper. So I think, I think that's a really great, I'm excited. It sounds really cool. <laughs> it, it provides that flexibility and that mm -hmm. little bit of enthusiastic conversation. And um, yeah. If we want to keep it short uh, when we do them, keep them in 40 minutes or an hour so that it's not just stretched out. So it really is impact time. And then I can edit that together, hopefully dragging it down to say like 20 minutes or something of just essential info because I don't know how much people want to wade through us hanging out and chatting and jamming. Uh, I guess we'll know more as we start actually producing them and editing them together. So, mm -hmm. Do you so have certain of... pages in mind um, that are uh, going to be for sure draw jam like pages or how's that? Like well, what's your thinking on that? Uh, my, th my thinking is that the draw jam is an integral part of making the page work but it's not mm -hmm. essential for everybody that was assigned to be there unless they okay. want to be there. But I think that the draw jam is useful because it can even give people that weren't there insight into what the others are thinking. They're going to get some visual information. Um, people that aren't even participating are going to be able to keep up and see some of the insights. And, and I'm hoping it's also an opportunity for some script changing, some dialogue changing, because um, we'll go off of that deeper level script, but it's still not set in stone. I want to write with everybody. And the only reason we really made a page level breakdown script this time was to alleviate worry and fret about just kind of having to be left to your own devices and freewheeling and making the stuff up. I thought it might make it harder for people to jump in, uh, make it feel more like a job to or mm -hmm. a scary thing to get involved with but as we keep going we can kick the training wheels off and just start to do fun things or even do little projects on the side brian i know you were asking you were like man i have some ideas already about this stuff that we could do <laughs> and i could see you just totally riffing on these little short stories and having uh compilation stories that just happen off to the sides yeah i was actually uh, about to ask <laughs> what your sort of thoughts were because I realize this is um, the, the main idea of this is collaborative, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of always a little bit up there and coming up with tons of ideas. Um, and I don't want to like go against the script, um, but how would you sort of like, um, uh, if you already have like a strong idea. Let's see if he comes back. Yeah. Um, and like make sort of work in collaborative. I'm sorry. Oh, I think you cut out for a bit, but I think you, what I heard last was a strong, you already have a strong idea. How is there room for you to be flexible in that? Yeah, yeah. I think that's something that can come out of the draw jams or, and some of the draw jams can be more like story sessions where we kind of concoct a little bit of an idea about the characters. Um, and some of that might happen on the side. I know I, I was planning a meeting with Kevin Curley from Buckets of Size because I had said, oh, you'd be great at making this character that is all about having no fear and then going through a uh, process of fear. If you guys have read the script, it's the one that falls down the drain and ends up way down in the black tar. And so that might be a thing where we bring other people in and go, how do we tell some short stories about somebody dealing with fear, with this character dealing with that, and what kind of crazy stuff could be happening in there? And, and then kind of go, and go. You know, make four pages happen with crazy stuff. That's something that as we, we get our rhythm, it'll be easy to let go and have happen, I hope. If the enthusiasm stays that's up. that sort of stuff that, I, that I'm most excited about. And so, yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I, I found myself pretty interested in when you were talking over the concept, because there, this idea of this world, that's a quilt. It's like, there are so many different characters and situations that can be written in that. And, and I, I thought, you know, that'd be really interesting just to have something that's basically mundane but it's still set in this world with the setting. Yeah, I remember you said, yeah. So, you know, you, you could have, like, just basically some some weirdo guy doing, like, an autobio-type story about what it's like to live in this place. It's oh, like, yeah. okay, so I got this stuff going on. I met this guy that looks exactly like me, but he isn't me, and it's really disturbing. 
He has my name. He says he has the same parents as me, but he is clearly not me. And he's been quilted in from this other place. Or maybe I got quilted in from this other place. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And that's that thing, too, as we open the as we open the gates, all that stuff can start to get coordinated and start to happen. I know one of our tasks is to figure out exactly the nature of the world. The one thing that we really wanted to do um, and John and I said, if doing things like uh, indie comic team up was a, um, a pull of pulling people in with their characters and incorporating them in these mashups and doing stuff together. This is this more insular thing. It's a, um, a, a push into this bottle or this terrarium where the things that we put in it need to stay there and they need to not come out of the quilt so that we don't make start making a story that's, and I'm guest uh, guest appearancing my OCs in there. They're going to do this weird stuff and that's <laughs> they come back out and go into my world. Well, then that wrecks the whole world because the world becomes like, like the friend show uh, where they would have these big mega stars show up and become the boyfriend or girlfriend of some main character on friends. And like, you know, this jackass is going to be gone in two episodes. And so <laughs> it means nothing to the, to the caliber of what you're producing. So it's like a terrarium and what you stick in there should stay in there and exist only in the quilt and not get pulled out for your stories elsewhere or anything like that. And so we wanted to kind of create a credo. I don't know if it, exactly fits with the creative commons but we wanted it to make it awesome by making sure that what you put in the bottle can't come out but that's a good idea when it comes to people who are just starting comics because especially if they maybe they go into industry jobs yeah. most characters you create for those you don't own those characters and that's the thing that i've got a wee bit of fear of that I've like, if like I do honey here mainly just now, but in the future, if I create a character I really like, but it's for another company, they could absolutely ruin that character later on. But in this, it's I'm completely creating characters or character development for an insular prod project that anybody can do with. If you, you know what I mean, like that. Yeah, so don't take your, your favorite idea and stuff it in this bottle. Put things in that you want to be a gift to comics and indie comics and for it to be a, um, a thing that you're happy blowing and letting go into the breeze like that. And sort of my instinct about that is it's okay for the characters not to be super unique or like, because I mean, there, there's going to be a ton of characters. So if you use almost an algorithm to make a character and they're somewhat generic, that's not the end of the world. That could still work well with the story. Yeah. That's sort of my thought. And that was one of the reasons John and I tried to, to chip in at the first with some basic characters. We thought we wanted to have some quality to it. I can make a million characters a minute. Uh, I have no shortage like that. And I thought, I just want these things to set a tone that is inclusive of all, all the um, broad interests that we have at the union. And yet I'm going to give them away and I want them to do their own thing and have a nice life within this terrarium of the quilt. So, so who's yeah, going to be the first character murderer? <laughs> yeah. And it'll be somebody else's character. Oh no. Yeah. We'll have to have, but it, it'll be, I mean, they're going to be all of ours. These, the draw jams, um, it's going to be very special actually. Cause I think that's when, um, I'm excited about the draw jams. Cause I think that's where a lot of sparks will fly. Um, I hope I can make a lot of them, but I, yeah, anyway, I'm excited about that because I think that's when we're going to, um, fall in love with our, what we're making. Um, I was thinking about like the design aspect as well. And I, because like, um, in order for people to make the panels, they have to know what the characters look like and the settings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing the design work is going to happen before like people get panels. Oh yeah. Character right. sheets. Yeah, you'll we'll have to generate character sheets. That'll be fun. <laughs> Robbie, I think you might be the character sheet guru. John's got a knack for that too. So starting tomorrow, we're going to have a, a barbarian uh, draw jam. And uh, we'll get together on, on um, uh, Magma Studio and start working out some of those, those looks oh, for this. Wow. What does a 70s sci-fi in decline barbarian society look like? Mm. And we, I have a, several more of those little meetings, and some of them might just be mini meetings with smaller groups where I say anybody that wants to come can show up. We'll do a quick little blast of getting a look of a character and seeing if people want to put their own style onto it. 
Um, but we'll get all those laid out over the next couple of weeks, and then we'll start rolling with this. I'm imagining cool. sometime in February we'll be able to start uh, assembly lining through the pages and make it a, a a less involved process for me and some of the others, and more of just a a fun thing that you can every once in a while pick up and run with. Uh, Just imagining someone at some point being like, okay, I hate panel 12. Nobody's <laughs> touching panel 12. And, and then eventually it's like, okay, who's, who's doing panel 12? Because we got to get this thing out. <laughs> yeah. I have to nag about panels that nobody wants to draw. <laughs> when there probably should be someone who's like, um, like the overall in charge of co color person, you know, this like so that, you know, if you have different artists doing different panels, you you need for the like the the overall page to kind of you know. Uh, that's a good point, it. Robbie. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a really good point. You know, so I would think we would probably need. I nominate Jink Beast because I, I I think that um, she would be perfect for something like that. That really, <laughs> you know, she's got such a great eye for color. <laughs> and that's something. Uh, again, Robbie now is the one that made the perfect segue into that odd jobs thing. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, Jink Beast would be a perfect choice for, for kind of color management with that stuff. I know she's finishing up a bunch of uh, uh, college uh, work right now, but afterwards she said she's really excited to be a part of that. And so editors and people dealing with color, I was also imagining um, people that were interested in lettering. And I know I had a few people in mind I thought I would reach out to who really enjoy that craft of lettering because there may be some people that are like, eh, I don't want to do that lettering element of this. And so we might, be able, we might be able to find some interactions with people who have that down and, and really want that chance to shine. So that's I'd, I'd be happy to do, I do hand lettering. So there might be some logistical problems because it's not digital, but I rather enjoy lettering. So I wouldn't mind. See, so that's, yeah, that's a place where you can step up with that in addition to the wiki and things is, is that and, and any panels that you're going to work on. Yeah. You know, there's like some alchemy that can be done with that even. I mean, there's, I, th I think there's potential for something where, where perhaps you hand letter something and someone can cut and paste that into the digital. Oh, yeah. Well, totally. Or, or alternately that you hand letter onto a print of it. I, I know that that might be prohibitive right now, but you know, yeah, things like that, they're, they're definitely possibilities. And it's fun to see those things. We can do them as experiments. That's the thing. I don't have... I'm not looking for this to be this uniform product. I want it to be the, 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 the extremes of everybody's talents and visions and to, that it moves and shifts and, and, and is shaped by everyone. Rather than well, like I know for me, it's not my strong point as far as, you know, like coloring, but I would love, you know, at some point to uh, color somebody else's panel. You know what I mean? Oh, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. so those are the kind of things that are easy because yeah. everyone, and we've all gotten really good at kind of um, knocking on one of those doors and saying, hey, can I borrow your character for this draw, uh, for this indie comic team up thing or the indie fan yeah. arts thing. And so that's one more way that we can um, use those skills and move around and find those friendship collaborations across the union and, uh, and people who are coming into the union too. So, what yeah. if it's, uh, just for uh, sort of convenience, sort of um, develop style guides for some of these things? Because naturally, I mean, when we're talking about lettering. Um, it, it would be nice to have some unity between yeah. what fonts we use in between each panel, or maybe even something uh, basic like uh, um, an, an exemplary uh, or, or something for an example for a, a background for like uh, one type of setting. Um, once we kind of get more in depth and really like kind of uh, key on our, our locations, uh, you know, something like that. So that way we can still all go in our different directions, but still sort of be uniform. Yeah. And that's something the website will be perfect for too. We can uh, publish all the style guides and stuff, uh, keep them as part of the wiki that we're building up there with all the, the background information. Um, and then uh, have a subsection with the scripts and uh, things like lettering style guides and stuff too. Yeah. But I think um, part of the part of what is special about this is that um, the quiltiness where we're, we're, you know, like you were saying, Drew, um, we, we might have even in one panel, a couple of artists having some stuff going on, maybe a character is looking in a mirror and the mirror image is someone else's version of that same character. Oh, that'd so be cool. cool. Yeah. You know, like, 
um, or there's a reflection in the water as they're walking by something. And that reflection, we take some, you know, some other artist who does that and it just sort of a different style or a different even, you know, traditional or, or something. I think that would be really cool and just sort of embrace the fact that we're, um, you know, this is a quilt. Although I think lettering, it's true. Like that's a good place to have some sort of, um, I don't know. It's like kind of the question is how jarring do we want it to be? Well, sometimes one possibility the... with lettering is scene by scene, like a three page scene has the same letterer and then it yeah. switches when it switches scene. That'd be a little less jarring. Oh, okay. yes. Or, or by character also. That's another possibility I was, I was going to mention. I think, um, I think Eric Larson in Savage Dragon was experimenting with some hand lettering at one point. And the way I remember it, he was doing a lot more hand lettering in the scenes with uh, Mr. Glum in them, who is a particularly cartoonish little character. And, and so some of the scenes were working with computer lettering and some of them were working with hand lettering. And, you know, the, it is definitely possible to work it all in together uh, in a way that's, that's still aesthetically pleasing and, and consistent. And the presentation in a lot of formats that we're going to show this is panel by panel. Um, while we want it to be something that could be assembled uh, into a PDF, the, the way that most people are going to view this is on the website as an individual panel or on Instagram as an individual panel. And then in the draw jams and things that we post to YouTube where we're seeing it probably at the most holistic level because we were considering putting uh, six squares on the uh, uh, the the uh, frames for the Magma Studio and kind of everybody drawing in their their slots, but uh, for the most part we'll see it kind of as, as individuals. So while that consistency is awesome to coordinate, we don't have to be that uniform. We don't have to be uh, really rigid about it. Thank you for following along with the Indie Comic Union as we pull together our collaborative comic project, The Quilt. We have lots more videos coming up very soon, the next of which is going to be about panel layouts. We'll be discussing Jack Kirby and Eric Larson and just trying to figure out how we're going to pull together a whole big group of comic makers to make a single project happen. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, too early. <laughs> <laughs> You're snaking comments. It's never too early. <laughs>